Comics on location. Hey, welcome to another Comics on Location. We're in London along the Thames. We're going to be checking out some nautical and maritime stuff here along the Thames. We're going to check out at least four boats along the way, maybe more. Anyway, first of all, we're up here at the HMS Belfast. You can see it there in the distance. There seems to be a huge cruise ship next to it. I don't know if that's always there, I doubt it. I'm guessing it's just moored there for a while. But let's. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to go on it today or not, but uh, we will get some film of it though. So I'm not sure if we're going to go on board today because uh, we've got a couple of other places we've got to go that cost money. So maybe we just film this from the outside. But uh, this is a ship that uh, saw service, I believe, in World War II. I think it was decommissioned in the 60s, I believe, and turned into a floating museum. It's part of the Maritime Museum now, I believe. I'm not sure what the big boat behind it is. <laughs> but you get two boats for the price of one in this video, or even more than that, because after this, we're gonna, I'll tell you, I'll see you now, we're gonna go to the Golden Hind, which is an old medi, not an medieval, but it's an old boat, 1600, something like that. I think it's the one that, uh, was it Francis Drake that had the Golden Hind? Or was it the other fella? What's the other fella's name? I've forgotten. But we'll find out when we get there. I think that's the one they fought, uh, is that even the one he fought the Spanish in, or the one that was called, they went to, um, they went to America in, and discovered potatoes, Port O'Reilly. Francis Drake, I think it was Drake's boat. Anyway, this is the HMS Belfast. I could uh, give you some more information, like over the top, but I probably won't bother, because the, these videos don't get enough views to make it worth my effort, to be honest. It's like I get 40 views, whatever, it's like, what's the point of, <laughs> trying hard with them but I will show you some comic books later I have got a load of comic books with me related to boats and ships look at the guns on the side there Here's our next nautical stop. It's the Golden Hind. <laughs> St Mary's ovary, ovary stock from the 16th century stock. I think a hind is a female deer, isn't it? I believe so, anyway. Could be wrong. There's a lot of work being done next to it. It's dry dock, anyway. So let's read this. In 1577, the Golden Hind set sail from Plymouth, captured by Francis Drake. His mission was to sail to the Pacific, explore new territories and raid Spanish colonies and shipping. Nearly three years later, the Golden Hind arrived back in England laden with valuable cargo and cemented her place in history as the first English ship to circumnavigate the world. Drake was knighted for successes and continued to play a key role in English maritime history. The Golden Hind herself was birthed in a dry dock in Deptford as a museum ship, which was, she was open for public exhibition. Sadly, almost nothing now remains of the original ship, which had succumbed to rot by the mid-1600s. So, this full-scale reconstruction of the Golden Hind was launched in April 1973, commissioned by Golden Hind into the San Francisco. She was designed by California naval architect Loring Christian Norgard after years of meticulous research. 
built using traditional techniques of jade inks inside the shipyards in Appledore, Devon, as it represents a milestone in the history of naval architecture. On the 1st of October 1974, the reconstructed Golden Plain began our first adventure. Since then, she has circumnavigated the globe, completed multiple Atlantic crossings, and worked as a museum around the world, sailing over 100,000 miles. Since being invited to, to St Mary Overy Dock in 1996, Golden Hyde has served as a museum with a range of programmes, events and performances designed to prove life into history. Want to know what it's like to sail on a 16th century galleon? Come on board and find out! So there's the uh, journeys that she partook in. Still surrounded by scaffold on this side as well as on the other side. Rather small when you think about it. That's not the kind of, I mean, not that I'm into sailing around the world anyway, but I don't think I'd want to do it on this little thing <laughs> if I was going to do it. Alright, so we've paid to come on board the Gold Nine. We've been told to watch our heads because of low beams and to watch our footing because of slippery, slippery decks. There's a treasure box. Oh, it's quite slippery getting up this gangplank, blank, babe. Very careful. There's a little uh, illustration of when it sailed around the world, I'm guessing. And this part of the ship is called the Foxhall. That's a pretty low door. I can get any of that bang in my head. <laughs> I don't really need a heavy metal way. The rigger. I'm not sure if you can see that. I can't really see that. It's just telling you about the different implements that are in there. That's where the, uh, the, the ropes. Oh, my head's literally, I bent over, my head's literally touching the ceiling. <laughs> This is some kind of game they played on board or something, or is this some kind of directional calculator? It's like a compass. There's a cannon. I suppose it wasn't really a warship though. Although it did attack the, the Spaniards, I think he said. God, Jesus. I know they were shorter back in those days, but. So, where are you going? You come down. It's a bit of a wooden oh, chest. Do you have cannons? Sorry? Do you have cannons? Yeah, I know, I saw them. What about them? Just, just tell them. Yeah, I saw them, baby. Mm -hmm. when, I was, when I came in there, about three minutes ago. Well, oh, mind you, right here. Yeah, well, you've really got to mind your head and be careful your back when you're bending over as well. Wow, I've literally bent over, bent over in half to get in here. <laughs> Actually, if you can see me, bent over to, uh, yeah. <laughs> There's the ceiling above my head. <laughs> and um, I'm kneeling down, so, interesting. Imagine these were for loading the cannon. You've got, no, you've got a window of a porthole there, I guess you call it. A hatch, maybe, for a cannon. Are you alright, babe? Yeah, just keep moving. <laughs> Do you want to go to the next one? I'll just push it down the box. Yeah, I oh, you lift your head up a little bit more here, in the middle. Right in there. <laughs> Lisa's done the sensible thing and sat down in the box. <laughs> How'd you like it, babe? Would you like sailing on this across the around the world? 
it's wood, isn't it? Got a crap load of cannons in here. Damn. Heck load of cannons. There's more stairs going up over there. But I want to investigate these stairs going down first, I think. <laughs> yeah. I gotta try it. Wow. <laughs> it weren't joking about mind your head. Oh. <laughs> this. I am. This. Oh, babe. Oh. Some gunpowder barrels there, I'm guessing. Wow. Yeah, we built just a medicine box or something. Red blood, yellow bile, black bile, and phlegm. Black bile, black bile, and uh, the Greek for black bile is melancholia. Where the depression comes from. Melancholia, black bile is if you were depressed, you have black bile. Which is melancholia. Still doing this for sleeping quarters. I'm sure you can read that. Born on a farm in Tavistock, circa 1540, and raised on the banks of the River Medway, Drake's first voyages to the Americas were as part of slave trading expedition for his kinsmen, the Hawkins family. In 1568, Drake and Sir John Hawkins were attacked by the Spanish in San Juan de Ulula and made an arrow escape. Swearing vengeance, Drake began his career as a pirate. His successful raids on Spanish colonies recommended him to Elizabeth I, who charged him with the task of furthering English interests on the Pacific coast of the Americas. The mission which almost certainly included unwritten permission to plunder Spanish ships and settlements was a closely guarded secret so as not to inflame tensions between England and Spain. In 1577, Drake set sail for Plymouth with a small fleet of five ships. His flagship, the Pelican, was the only one to make it through the Straits of Magellan and raid the Pacific coast. It was renamed the Golden Hyde in honour of its patron, Sir Charles, Sir Christopher Hatton. Maybe the Golden Hyde was on his crest or something. Rich with Spanish silver and gold, Drake sailed west and became the first English person to circumnavigate the world, returning home in 1580, where he was knighted aboard the Golden Hyde at Deptford. Following his circumnavigation, Drake continued to play a key role in establishing England as a maritime power before finally succumbing to dysentery. He was buried at sea in a lead coffin. So somewhere, uh, somewhere in the sea, there's probably fish nibbling at his remains. <laughs> the hold is where they stored the ship's main storage area for food, drink, equipment and materials. Any captured treasure would also be kept here. So I'm guessing that's the food, hard tack, just hard ship biscuit. Can't imagine being at sea for months on end with nothing more blinking. Weevil in crusted biscuit to eat. No, it's what's that supposed to be? Yeah. Kind of food stuff is that gum powder? Is that gum powder? Yeah, not too sure. Well, you yeah. can't go through there. So. Ooh. Let's have a word of Abel Seaman Lisa. <laughs> Hello, Abel Seaman Lisa. How are Hello. you today? I'm alright. <laughs> there's, there's water dripping down here. Yeah. Uh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to throw that on a boat. No, no, no. Definitely. All right, so that was the Golden Hind. Interesting. It didn't cost you much to get on board, that's for sure. And yeah, nice to see, you know, that bit, bit bad on the old back. Lots of bending. Yeah. <laughs> didn't bang our heads, fortunately. Anyway, we're off for a little cruise down the river now. We've got our ticket. We're going to go on the uh, on the ferry, the uh, pleasure trip ferry. It's going to be like a guided tour, I think. So I'll show you some sights along the Thames. <laughs> he stopped raining a lot.
should have filmed that. The boat just pulled in. Yeah, I'm glad. Yeah. Oh, cheers, thanks for your help. Cheers.
quite at the top of the hill, just coming into the view at the top of the hill, that red bricked castle-like building. And that's the Greenwich Royal Observatory. You see the tea bar with the red ball at the bottom, at five to one every day, the red ball wipes the mast. That's exactly one o'clock, the ball will drop, and that's where Greenwich Mean Time is. It's up there where east meets west, and where time is set throughout the world. So I would highly recommend, recommend the walk up here if possible. They get a great view over London. Who is he talking about? Uh, 20 minute walk from the pit. The ship, the Cutty Sark, the old tea clipper, holds many records from crossings from China back to Europe. And ahead of the boat, the two large whites buildings, the old Greenwich Naval Colleges. That's where the Navy was trained years ago, today Greenwich University. So in Greenwich, there's lots of indoor and outdoor markets, bars, restaurants, so it's well worth getting off here, having a walk around. The returning boats today, we are the next boat going up river, we leave here straight away, and after us, they're every 30. We're at the Royal Maritime Museum now. So the National Maritime Museum, not the Royal Mar, but National. Oh, there's the, the thing, the red ball that drops. Yeah. 
So, as well as doing the maritime uh, stuff today, I wasn't doing a separate video. I might make it the same video though. We're going to go up there. That's the Greenwich Meridian starts there. That's the Royal Observatory, where the, the, all the time stuff came from, where we ship time out to the rest of the world. <laughs> and there's a red ball there on top of that building. If I can just zoom in on it. And every, every where is it? Every day at one o'clock. Can't even see where it is on this blinking off. It drops. Yeah, every day at one o'clock, the ball drops. And that means it's one o'clock when it's mean time. All right, almost out of battery. <laughs> Definitely out of money. It's 20 quid to get in the observatory. She didn't go in there. 28 quid to get on the the, uh, <laughs> the uh, bowl fast. We didn't go on there. And uh, I think it was 20 quid for the Kari Sark as well. So we just got shots outside. And uh, sh uh, hopefully I'll put it together. Show some time related comics. Show some ship related comics. And uh, we've got sore feet now. We've got to get home. So yeah, that'll do for this comics on location. Uh, yeah, feel free to make your own. <laughs> and tag us in it if you want to, to let us know where you've been. Anyway, we're off. Cheerio, bye. As if this video wasn't long enough, I'm going to show you these comic books again because I'm not sure how well they came out on the video. So here's Demon and Batman fighting on a ship. Here's Batman and Clayface, the original Clayface, fighting on a ship. Here's Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos on a little, <laughs> on a little dinghy with shaking their fists at a giant uh, Nazi boat. This one's a hovercraft, so I'm not really sure if that counts. Right, then we got some U-boat action there, and a tank falling off a boat. <laughs> we got a boat being attacked by giant gorillas and uh, yeah, octopuses. Right, we've got war and attack here. We've got an old junk, old Chinese junk, and you got this yeah 
boats fighting each other. Here we've got the Sea Hag, and there's a little tiny boat there that she's attacking. Right, Red Sonia aboard a little boat. Conan on board a little boat. <laughs> there's Aquaman on board a, pet, a dolphin with a boat in the background. The fisherman, the sensational vil supervillain, out the whole Aquaman. Code name Assassin. He's attacking this boat. We've got the Tempest. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Here we see in the background here a Spanish galleon looking boat. Yes. We've got coal on board a ship. We've got lovely Madame Xanadu with some ships at the bottom of the page here. Aquaman and a sunken ship. The pirate who plundered Atlantis. Aquaman again on a sailing ship fighting zombie pirates and by the looks of it. Conan famously meeting Belit on a ship. The, uh, what was it called, the ship? She's the Queen of the Black Coast, wasn't it? No, I can't remember the name of ship now. Anyway, whatever. Right, here's House of Secrets with a, a murderous figurehead on the front of a ship. And a House of Mystery with a ghost harpooning the captain of the ship. Right, for the time related comics. Because we were at the Greenwich Meridian, the observatory where they they make time at the observatory and they, they ship it around the rest of the world. <laughs> We've got Atta being a watch. We've got Atta being attacked by a watch, which I believe is the first appearance of Kronos, the time the time bad guy. Right, we've got somebody dead in a clock. <laughs> we've got a dead thing emerging from a clock. It's midnight, why hasn't the clock rung? The thing in the clock. And we've got some time travel comics from Rip Hunter, Time Master. He's disobeying the rules of time by, by going backwards and all sorts. Meeting different people from history. And having wacky adventures. <laughs> Dangerous adventures. There he is in England. Meeting one of the Queens. Uh, the dying London Tower, we passed that when we was on the riverboat. Uh, <laughs> the missing link monster. But yeah, some time related comics. And there he's getting off with his head. Right, 